we all have learned that generally voltage at sending end are higher than the voltage at receiving end. But in some cases we can see exactly opposite of what we have learned. The voltage at receiving end become higher than the voltage at sending end. Sounds like something spookier. But not my friend, it is due to effect known as Ferrand effect, which is generally present in medium to long power transmission line. Welcome to my YouTube channel Thakar Ki Parshala and today we will deeply analyze this phenomenon right from its origin. In this video you will learn definition, theory about how it actually occur in long power transmission line and in last with some equation and phasor diagram I will explain why voltage at receiving end become greater than the voltage at sending end. Also I will explain Ferrand defect in both way theoretically as well as mathematically. So stay tuned until end of this video to clear all of your doubts about Ferrand defect. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel then it will be good idea to hit that subscribe button because here I explain very hard topic of engineering in very simple language. Let's first of all see what the book say about Ferrand defect. In the year of 1890 British electrical engineer and inventor S.Z. Ferrand came to know that when medium and long transmission line are under light or no load then receiving end voltage becomes significantly higher than the voltage at generating or sending end. You all know these things very well. All transmission line have some constant parameters like resistance, series inductance, shunt capacitance. These are called as primary constants. In short transmission line, these constants do not impact much on performance of line. But when length of line increases, the effect of this constant on transmission line also increases. Both series capacitance and series inductance are responsible for Ferrand effect. Let's see how it happens. In normal case when lines are loaded there is voltage drop at receiving end because of inductive nature of loads which consume reactive power from line. The reactive power is generally provided by bank of capacitor connected parallel to the load side as well as from lines own capacitance. So when load is connected the inductive load will consume reactive power which is generated by capacitor. Everything work fine. But when there is no or very light load on line then also capacitor continue to provide reactive power to the line and voltage at receiving end will become significantly higher than the sending end. I know you are still somewhat confused now. But please watch this video till end and I hope you will clear all of your doubts. If you remember then at starting of video I have mentioned that transmission line also have its own inductance which is also responsible for voltage increase. When line is under no or very light load then what happens is that charging current which is flowing from line also flow through the series inductance of line and it create a voltage drop. This voltage drop is in line with the sending end voltage and as we move near to receiving end this voltage keeps on increasing and we get more voltage on receiving end than the sending end. Now let's try to understand this theory with help of phasor diagram. This is reference phasor which is receiving end voltage VR and is represented by OA. Phasor for capacitive current IC is represented by OD. Value of capacitive current is given by equation IC is equal to J omega CVR. Now if we want to draw the phasor for sending end voltage we have to calculate its value. Sending end voltage is equal to voltage at receiving end plus resistive drop plus reactive drop. So we can write that Vs is equal to Vr plus Icr plus Jicx. This is resistive drop and this is reactive drop. Here Ic is common in both the terms so we can write this equation somewhat like this. Vs is equal to Vr plus Ic into bracket I plus Jx. Now putting value of capacitive current and inductive reactors we will get this equation Vs is equal to Vr plus j omega cvr into bracket r plus j omega xn. If we multiply this term in bracket then we will get value of sending end voltage like this. Vs is equal to vr minus omega square clvr plus j omega crvr. Here note that this term becomes negative because this both j will be multiplied and become j square. J is unit imaginary number in mathematics. We take it as I but here in electrical we also take I to represent current. So to avoid misconfusions we take J as unit imaginary number and value of its square is minus 1. Like this video if you don't know this fact before. So we can draw the phasor of sending and voltage like this. Drop due to line resistance and charging current is shown by AB but it is very low and we can neglect it. 
From phasor diagram, we can clearly see that phasor of receiving end is larger than the phasor of sending end. I hope you have cleared your doubts. If you have any doubt or suggestion for a topic which should I cover in my next video, then comment it down below and share it with your friends so they can get also benefit from it. So that's it for now. Hope to see you in my next video.